Ah, uh, yung hapon, uh, Dr. Sales. Uh, it's great to see you again after a bit of a long time um, uh, because of the COVID uh, pandemic. But the last time we saw each other was in the jungles of Davao uh, <laughs> Occidental. And, and, um, and, and that sort of like provided us a, a you know, a, um, a very good activity of uh, showing how uh, UNDP and uh, the DOST have been collaborating to promote grassroots innovation. Um, would you be able to um, refresh us a little bit about um, what the grassroots innovation program is for DOST and the framework that drives the implementation of this project. Please go ahead, please. Yes, uh, alam natin na ngayong taon, no? uh, year 2020, uh, we were challenged by disasters and uh, emergencies. Hindi lang pandemic, uh, Rex, but also uh, we had earthquakes here in Davao region. Uh, so we, we thought of uh, developing a program that will develop resilience ng ating mga communities, lalong-lalo na yung mga nasa laylayan ng lipunan, no? yung mga marginalized and disadvantaged communities natin. And um, we thought of focusing on uh, the indigenous people communities here in Davao region kasi uh, isa sila sa mga marginalized uh, sectors ng ating society. Uh, and... Uh, yun yung naging impetus for the development ng GRIND program, yung Grassroots Innovation for Inclusive Development Program ng DOST. And then uh, we have you there as our partner. Um, and uh, this uh, Grassroots Innovation for Inclusive Development Program is our strategy to uh, make our communities uh, resilient. No? Kahit merong pandemic, kahit may merong disaster, they would be able to rise up and uh, build back better. Uh, and also our strategy for the new normal. Gusto nating ma-empower itong mga marginalized communities and then uh, support uh, grassroots innovators. No? Uh, alam nyo, maraming uh, mga innovations na gina gin ginawa at ginagawa ang ating mga katutubo no dito sa Davao region and marami dito ang that were passed on from generations to generations that have been proven to be effective in addressing problems sa kanilang mga communities so that's the idea of yung grassroots innovation for inclusive development program uh, we launched this project in uh, 2019 uh, with the support of UNSCAP. And then uh, we presented during that uh, event yung GRIND framework plan, no? kung saan nakasaad yung ating directions for grassroots innovations, uh, not only for Davao region, kasi we intend this to be a national program, uh, para lahat ng regions would be able to look at uh, the resources that they have in terms of grassroots innovations na uh, nasa ano rin, no? nasa background lang. No? They're not part of the formal R&D and innovation ecosystem sa, sa region. So what we want is to bring them uh, to the fore and uh, if possible, commercialize uh, the products and the technologies that they have uh, develop para naman makatulong sa kanilang livelihood. Uh, it can be a source of income for these uh, IP communities. And um, part of the framework plan is yung tinatawag natin 4Ls. No? Uh, yung learning, uh, kung saan eh, i-inventory natin yung grassroots innovation sa lugar. Uh, and then, uh, develop yung saliklakbay mobile app. No? Uh, ang UNDP ang nagturo sa atin, ang nag-introduce sa atin itong saliklakbay. It's a methodology, it's a scientific methodology to, to learn about 
the different uh, grassroots innovations uh, na nasa uh, lugar ng uh, iba't ibang lugar ng, ng Davao region. Yung pangalawang L uh, is leveraging uh, based on uh, available resources and then yung experiences ng ating communities. Gusto nating malaman kung ano pa yung mga interventions na pwede natin ibigay sa kanila para these innovations can be further developed, commercialized, bring them these products and technologies to market. Yung pangatlong L is linking. Uh, we want to uh, create a network of grassroots innovators para among them, they can share their experiences, they can share knowledge, and uh, put all this knowledge in a database para, uh, and we can you know, make this accessible or accessible to uh, other possible users. Yung last na L, yung legitimizing, is uh, we want to bring uh, grassroots innovation on board the formal uh, science, engineering, technology, and innovation ecosystem. Uh, dapat kasali sila doon para uh, if they are part of that network, if they are part of that ecosystem, eh, madali silang makaka-access ng, ng information, makaka-access ng expertise, and uh, they can even access um, uh, financing no? through this network and also access to market. Uh, kasi alam natin na yung, yung mga researchers natin sa industry, researchers sa uh, academe, eh, may mga link na yan sa kanilang uh, market to their technologies. So yun yung four L's ng uh, grind framework plan. Uh, and uh, yung DOST and UNDP has been partnering uh, in the implementation of this program here in Davao region, starting with the, uh, by capacitating our stakeholders. Uh, kasama na dito yung mga empleyado ng DOST, empleyado ng different uh, national government agencies, local government units, and uh, our partners in the academe and even in the industry and the media. We are uh, employing what we call yung pentahelix uh, approach no, to development uh, because we want to be inclusive uh, as far as you know getting the perspective and inputs from these uh, different sectors of society para masasabi natin na lahat ng uh, development efforts under the grind program are are inclusive and uh, yung partners natin and then the communities in particular are not just beneficiaries hindi lang sila tatanggap ng ng beneficio from the from the program but really uh, we see them as active players and partners in the development process. So in, in a nutshell, yun yung, ano, yung grind program. And, uh, our, and we're happy with our uh, engagement with UNDP. Kasi as I've said, sila yung nag-introduce sa atin itong saliklakpay. It's really fun. It's a really fun way of doing research, no? Uh, kasi tayo nasanay tayo sa formal research uh, na masyadong seryoso. So this time with Salik Lakbay under, grind, under the grind program, we go to communities you know, and uh, interact with them as, uh, as partners. No? As partners and then uh, that way we make them feel at ease so that they open up and provide us the inputs that we need as basis for uh, development and decision making. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Sales, no, for uh, the, the, the description on what the Grassroots Innovation for Inclusive Development Program is and how the partnership, uh, not just between UNDP and the OST, but also at the same time with various sectors as you mentioned a while ago, the pentahelic sectors in, in the society has been helping a lot push this um, project into some form of a movement that also includes the indigenous peoples. I, I'm very interested to, to 
to know what usually happens in the Salik Lakbay. I've been to one Salik Lakbay and that has been very memorable for me with, with Kulas, a uh, very famous in, uh, um, influencer who is already part of the network. Um, but you've been to a lot of the Salik Lakbay. Uh, would you be able to tell us a little bit about what happens here, what, are be, what has been found, what we are looking for, and what are unique insights that you've seen so far from the around, I hear around eight Salik Lakbays that we already have done since we started in 2020, in early of 2020, before the pandemic. Please go ahead, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Nabulunan ako. <laughs> Maalala nyo, sir, yung ano natin, yung sa market pa tayo, di ba? The, the, the first, uh, first salik lakbay in the middle of the market of Agdao. <laughs> that was fun. So that was really an immersion. Uh, yung salik lakbay uh, is a term which is a combination ng dalawang uh, Tagalog words, no? yung saliksik which is to explore or research, at saka yung lak- lakbay, which is to journey or go on an adventure. So, salik lakbay. So, um, in all our salik lakbays na nagawa na namin dito sa Davao region, I think we've covered already all the provinces. No? From Davao Oriental to Davao de Oro to Davao del Norte, Davao del Sur and Davao Occidental ay nakahalubilo natin yung mga IP communities. Ito yung kagandahan ng Salik Lakbay kasi kailangan pumunta ka talaga doon sa community, mag-immerse, no? Makasalamuha mo sila, makausap ng maayos para makuha mo talaga yung inputs na kakailanganin mo uh, to identify yung mga grassroots innovations na nagawa nila uh, to address yung mga problema nila sa komunidad. No? So, uh, as I've said earlier, ito ay marahil itong mga karamihan ng mga grassroots innovations ay nagawa nila uh, nung uh, a long, long time ago and then pass on to uh, from generation to generation. So, ibig sabihin, uh, bakit nila ginawa yun? Bakit nila pinas on to their uh, subsequent generations? Kasi nakita nila na epektibo siya to address the problems uh, and provide solutions to the problems to in their communities. So, it's either a source of livelihood or pwede mag-address a certain health problem or disease in the community. In the Salik Lakbay, it's usually done by a group of people. Kasi ang hirap naman kung mag-isa ka. You know? uh, unang-una, you're going into a, you know, a new territory. So kailangan may kasama ka para uh, kumbaga pa body mo uh, when you interview the people. And then also for, for security purposes. No? Uh, so we, we do this in groups or, uh, or small groups of people. And then mas maganda rin kung multi-agency no? and multidisciplinary din yung, mga, yung background ng mga gagawa ng saliklakbay para yung perspective pagdating doon eh, uh, iba-iba and then they can ask questions in relation to those from the from the background where they come from no so uh, multi uh, multi perspective then ang mga question na itatanong and then makikita natin yung different aspects of of the community so hindi lang economic pati na yung social pati na yung environmental um, and uh, in our experience uh, we would consider yung as part of our major accomplishments, yung, we were able to conduct already, as you mentioned, around, uh, I think, eight, yeah. and uh, identify 173, would you believe, potential grassroots innovations, and five of which emanated from uh, the Mandaya community in Barangay Antap, 
in Davao de Oro. And uh, we were also able to conduct uh, Salik Lakbais in the Bagobo Tagabawa IP community in Pansalan, Davao del Sur, and Digos, Davao del Sur. And also in the Atamanobo Mandaya di Babao in Kapalong, Davao del Norte, Tagakaulo IP community in Datu, Danwata, Malita, Davao Occidental and the Mansaka IP community in Mabini, Davao de Oro. So, uh, ito yung iilan pa lamang, uh, Rex, na mga IP community sa Davao region. If I'm not mistaken, meron tayong 13 IP communities in Davao City alone. Wow. No? So, kung titingnan mo pa yung ibang uh, IP communities in the other provinces of Davao region, mas marami pa doon, no? na kailangan, maganda sana kung mapuntahan natin, gawa ng uh, saliklakbay para makita rin natin, matulungan sila pag-identify ng mga grassroots innovations and then help them provide essential interventions to these communities para we can bring these uh, innovations to market uh, and uh, address the problems in their community. Marami tayo nakitang ethnobotanicals no, na na ginagamit na nila for a long, long time already uh, addressing health and disease problems in the communities. Uh, and we intend to improve the quality of these products para mas marketable not only here in, in uh, the local market but also in the global market. Kasi I know that in Europe and the US, they are, you know, gaga about... <laughs> about these ethnic products functional uh, foods ethnobotanicals yeah. uh, but also food products yung heritage foods na tinatawag and uh, artisanal crafts mm. no i saw Oops. in europe uh, maraming specialty shops doon that are specializing on on this uh, uh, novelty items or ethnic products from different parts of the globe so, so far, uh, Rex, those are the accomplishments uh, under the GRIND program. Thank you very much, Dr. Sales, for, uh, for the list. This is, these are really, really good um, uh, accomplishments that we have done in, in, in such a short span of time. And given the fact that there's COVID-19 pandemic, I understand there's a lot of salik lakbays that were cancelled. Uh, because of the pandemic, one of the, them was Mount Himigitan. I was supposed to be there but wasn't able to because of the pandemic, right? So, um, but sh I, I hope that there will be more uh, in the future. Um, now, now, looking at this, uh, you know, interface between the DOST and government, you know, because, I, you know, UNDP comes here to support DOST, but it's really DOST who is on the ground 24-7, um, engaging with the IP communities. How, how do you think that, uh, how does GRIND program um, acknowledge or help give a voice to these IP innovators uh, through their innovations and how are their contributions um, you know uh, how do they also help give back to the community itself um, the reason why we decided to focus our the grind program on IP communities is as I've said itong IP communities kasama dun sa talagang marginalized. Mm. Uh, in fact, uh, nasa you know, tail end siya nung, nung listahan ng mga kumbaga pa beneficiaries ng mga government programs and projects. Palagi silang nahuhuli uh, in terms of benefits uh, from government programs and projects. Kaya uh, I think this is a very good strategy for inclusive development. Gusto nating uh, isama itong mga IP communities sa ating uh, development efforts para naman yung benefits na makukuha natin from science and technology eh aabot doon sa, sa IP communities. And then uh, we also purposely decide that or we purposely focused on on three uh, 
priority commodities. No? Ito yung heritage foods. Dahil alam natin, food is a basic uh, item. No? Uh, and then, uh, yung artisanal crops. Dahil uh, ang ating IP communities have a wealth of knowledge and experience in in developing, producing, innovating on these types of products. And the third uh, priority is ethnobotanicals. Uh, ito ay dahil gusto natin makatulong sa uh, para matugunan yung mga problema in relation to health. No? And uh, in, in many of our conversations and discussions with the IP communities, lumabas yung possible cure for for COVID-19 no wow. in fact in one of the communities meron silang herb doon na sinasabi nila ginagamit nila ngayon to combat yung infection from COVID-19 in their experience according to their to their uh, to our during our interviews eh hindi sila nagkasakit kahit yung yung mga taong nasa labas ng komunidad eh nahawa na ng covid but because they were you know drinking this concoction using this herb that uh, is found uh, i think it is endemic in the area this is in Davao Occidental uh, so this this is something that we can explore further uh, by uh, employing yung you know, further research and uh, uh, testing the safety of this um, ethnobotanicals kasi hindi naman pwede, hindi natin pwede i-market yun if we do not ensure the the safety and efficacy of this. You know. So uh, what we're saying is maraming resources na pwede uh, matingnan for their health and medicinal benefits. And uh, we have been able to inventory uh, a number, not only in Davao Occidental, but the other provinces. In Davao Oriental, we have the Katmon. Yes. And uh, we were successful in developing you know, value-added products from Katmon. Uh, from uh, our conversations, we learned that this is used as an acidulant in uh -huh. soups and paxil. And so we thought that uh, perhaps we can extract the 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 acid from this katmon fruit and then make it into a commercial acidulant na pwede mong gawin for sinigang or for mm. other uh, food preparations and uh, we also develop candied products from katmon mm. so uh, leveraging that's the 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 leveraging part there uh, leveraging on the available knowledge traditional knowledge that we got from from these IP communities we were able to develop new products that I think would be marketable in the in uh, not only in the local market but also abroad no uh, and uh, yung artisanal crafts naman uh, sa tingin ko bibenta talaga ito sa ano sa sa labas mm -hmm. no we just have to improve the quality and marketability para uh, we can sell them outside the Philippines. Yes, so, actually, yeah, actually, sir. Uh, in terms of market, there's also I think a big market here ha, in in just in Met Metro Manila. Uh, I remember when we went to Adava Occidental, I was bringing, I, I bought a lot of these baskets and weaves. And uh, as of the moment, uh, the four baskets and the weaves that uh, the bag that I have uh, is no longer with me. Yeah. It's been. Ask. <laughs> because of the quality it's not even varnish it's not even having a finish it but the quality is really great and uh, you know it's a testament of the innovativeness and the uh, workmanship of its and creativity of the uh, indigenous peoples allow me to to segue to uh, my last question which is uh focusing more on on what you mentioned a while ago about the pentahelix uh, stakeholder uh, supporting grassroots innovation. Would you be able to provide us some kind of a, an example or a, a case or a study 
where we engage influencers, where we engage the media, where we engage uh, the non-traditional partners of, of, you know, in development, right? Because these are not traditional really if you come to think of it. Um, and how they've been able to help push and advocate for grassroots innovation in the Philippines. Please go ahead, sir. When, when before we only engage yung academe and then yung mga partners natin sa gobyerno, uh, uh, we, we started shifting towards more inclusive engagements or partnerships. So from government, industry, academe, naging government, industry, academe, and then we engage civil society. But this time, ginawa natin pentahelix kasi uh, nakita namin na, you know, scientists are not really good communicators. <laughs> Marami tayong invention or innovations or outputs of research and development na hindi may benta dahil uh, that's, that's a handicap, if I may call it that, handicap ng mga scientista na ibenta yung mga outputs nila. So this time we engage the media because we know that the media has the expertise, has the experience, they know how to communi communicate messages. And, and that's what we want to happen uh, uh, in order to promote the grind program and also the grassroots innovations ng ating mga katutubo. Eh, kailangan natin ng marunong mag-communicate. So dito papasok yung media. And uh, talking about media, meron tayong nakita na uh, sa tingin namin eh, would be very effective in helping us communicate our messages. This is in the person of uh, Kyle Douglas, no, si Kulas, na isang banyaga na <laughs> matagal na sa Pilipinas. Nagustuhan niya dito yung buhay sa Pilipinas. And then he's been going around the Philippines documenting these uh, innovative practices, these creative practices of indigenous people. So from, I think he has been to Tawi-Tawi and to, to the other ends of the Philippines, of the country, with this uh, wealth of experience and knowledge from, from his travels. Actually, uh, masasabi natin na siya yung pinakaunang saliklak buyer uh, Rex. No? <laughs> Kasi nagawa Before niya Before saliklak buy, there was him. There was him. Uh, <laughs> because he, he's a vlogger. No? Uh, so he, he makes uh, audiovisual, uh, audiovisual materials out of the, of the, the experiences that he had uh, in his travels uh, in the Philippines. So we decided to engage him, we contacted him, and then uh, makikita mo talaga may passion siya, and then may, may puso, puso para sa development, puso para sa pagtulong sa ating mga IP communities. And he you know, readily, uh, readily agreed to being our... Uh, we call him uh, the grind champion. The grind. How, how do we call him? Uh, Ken. Ambassador. Grind ambassador. Uh, ambassador. Grind. Yeah. Uh, that's why he we 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 uh, considered him as our grind ambassador. Because he's napakagaling, napakagandang uh, uh, communicator, and then yun nga ambassador for for the program. And also to promote the, the grassroots innovations of our Katutubo in, in Davao region. Right. Thank you very much, um, Sir uh, Dr. Sales, for, for the updates. Now, it's, it's great to be able to talk to you um, about, about what's happening so far. Uh, I know for a fact that, as you mentioned a while ago, that this is going to be implemented at a national scale. Um, how, how do you see this? coming along, um, you know, uh, looking beyond just Davao, because as you mentioned before, this is some kind of a prototype of how this the grind will be. How, how do you see this coming along in the next five years or so? Alam natin na marami rin uh, mga IP communities sa ibang regions ng, ng bansa. No? Uh, uh, 
I can mention a few in Region 12. We have the Tibolis and uh, uh, in Region uh, Caraga, we have and Region 10, we have also uh, IP communities there. In Mindanao alone, I think there uh, it uh, over a hundred IP communities are are residing in the island of Mindanao. So, kung titingnan pa natin, kung bibilangin pa natin yung ibang communities in the other parts of the country, talagang marami. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just imagine uh, the grassroots innovations na meron itong mga IP communities. So, it's really a wealth of knowledge na we can leverage on. And imagine if we are able to provide interventions, SNT interventions in the processes uh, by which they produce these products and enhancing the quality of their products. Talagang may enhance natin, may improve natin yung marketability. And uh, uh, malaki ang maitutulong sa, sa livelihood and maybe uh, we can even develop startups no? uh, focusing on this uh, priority commodities under the grind program. And uh, subsequently, we can market this not only in the Philippines, but abroad and help these communities become more resilient to the pandemic and to other uh, disasters uh, or epidemics that might happen in the future. So that's our vision for the grind program. Na isama lahat ng regions uh, para lahat ng mga katutubo sa Pilipinas ay matulungan natin, mabigyan natin ng uh, SNT interventions and uh, hopefully with the collective uh, efforts and the collective outputs of these communities we can contribute to economic development in the regions particularly in the countryside. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Sales, for joining us uh, in this wonderful learning uh, session. I'm calling it a learning session now. It's not just a conversation because uh, there's a lot of things that I learned when I, I talk to you about grassroots innovation. And of course, uh, when you mentioned a while ago that grass, the gra grassroots innovation for inclusive development um, supports the sustainable development goals because it provides um, the innovation infrastructure and sustainable livelihoods such that it lifts people out of, of poverty, especially those uh, in the marginalized, no, yung mga nasa laylayan. Maraming salamat.